My name is Mark Farber. I was the national PI for the uh, Gore CTAG blunt traumatic aortic injury trial uh, in the United States. It was a, a trial designed uh, to uh, test the device to treat patients that they uh, blunt traumatic aortic injury, typically after a motor vehicle accident. When a blunt traumatic aortic injury occurs, you could have the artery injured to different degree. Sometimes it's just the inner two walls. Sometimes it's the complete disruption of the artery. And when it's a complete disruption, the patients are, are bleeding fairly rapidly. And time is of the essence to get into the operating room. Um, compared to open techniques, we can rapidly get this device inserted in a matter of minutes for patients and stop the bleeding. And that's important in terms of obtaining outcome. The key study outcomes for this trial really surround uh, two parts. We saw no device compressions. The second uh, thing to look at with the outcome is that we didn't see any major complications when using the device. So we saw no endoleaks. We saw no retrograde uh, dissections uh, in the patients. And if you look at five years, there have been no devices that need to be taken out or removed for uh, complications in the entire cohort. There are no re-interventions that need to be done on the patients. Okay, we saw no device fractures. And that is, that's a big, uh, important finding when you look at these patients that may have these devices in for a long time. And the need for follow-up uh, is something we've always said is important for endovascular repair. And in this case, with these findings, we may find that uh, follow-up doesn't need to be quite as rigorous. And with it not being as rigorous, uh, we can um, kind of loosen up or not be so strict in these patients that are young and not use as much uh, ionizing radiation then for their lifespan. Uh, in the trial, the uh, CTAG device that we used did not have some of the new advancements that Gore has uh, brought into the product line, such as active control, which allows you to deflect the proximal aspect of the device and get it to sit even better to the inferior curve. Those newer enhancements really do aid in the precision of deployment and the accuracy for the clinician. Endovascular techniques uh, are always looked at from a um, initial procedure as well as durability and the number of reinterventions. In the, this data set, there are no patients that need reinterventions, and that's partially because of the disease process is a, a focal injury. But we didn't see device fractures and other issues. And while patients need to be monitored, not having those things in five years is a big implication. So having a device in a, in a human for five years, and now in many of our cases, we have them in 10 and 15 years, these devices, and we don't see problems occurring at a high rate. So the device is performing well. We don't see the need for any reinventions, and the patients could be fairly um, confident that they're not going to develop a problem. And I think that's important.